today on Sister to Sister. Should we be guaranteed a happy life as Christians? And what is the biggest spiritual struggle that Christian women face? And Ooh. what does turning the other cheek look like? Ooh, I'm gonna turn to you and we're so glad you're watching Sister to Sister. Hi, and welcome to Sister to Sister. We are five women, strong, powerful, wise, full of grace, <laughs> ready to answer the questions that you have written in. I'm Amy Schaefer, sitting in for the one and only Kathy, who is out traveling the world. She never likes to miss being with you. And Angela is sitting in for me today. It's great yes. to have you, Angela. So glad to be with you, ladies. <laughs> All right, ladies full of strength, grace, passion, and wisdom. The first question, Roxanne, I'm coming to you. What is the biggest spiritual struggle that Christian women face? Okay, I don't know if it's the biggest, but it's the one that I'm going to focus on, and it's perspective. Hmm. Yeah. And let me explain. Huh. And I, I hate to pick on Martha because she's such a cool lady. <laughs> she can cook and clean and do all the things I can't do or don't want to do. But she was looking at the immediate mm -hmm. instead of the eternal. Uh -oh. And I'm going to yeah. glance That's at good. my notes. She was not her only, but we, we try to act or look good mm -hmm. instead of being good. Mm -hmm. and we That's do good. that to our kids. Mm -hmm. We focus on the external. What's the scripture say? The adorning of the hair, which we all do, of course. But don't forget about the internal. We focus on performance instead of character. Mm -hmm. And I think that's such a disservice because then we're called hypocrites when our character doesn't line up with what we're saying or what we're doing in church or in the community. So if we focus on character, our children's character, not their performance alone, performance is good, but it's the inward person, not the outward person that God will someday judge. Mm. I agree with her mm -hmm. so much. Like I literally wrote getting real spiritual image. Mm -hmm. Like wow. mm -hmm. I think that is, I mean, I think you, you can't categorize everybody in one thing for right, anything. Right, right. I, I really think that everybody has their own struggles, mm -hmm. men, women, whatever it is. But right, I do good. think if you're going to say there's one thing that overriding that we struggle with, that is something that we do struggle mm -hmm. with. Mm -hmm. It's just like, mm -hmm putting that image on and yes. like that we feel like we have to be a certain way that we're at church on Sunday, we're one way. And it's just like, we have to ha keep up this image. Yes, and good. it's just so detrimental to our families, mm -hmm. to each other, to ourselves, because we don't get yes. real with each other, you know? And I, that's the beauty of the sisterhood that we have built here over 10 years, that we have been able to be so honest and truthful with, with each other, you know, in the friendships and relationships we've built outside of here, that we have talked to each other, we've shared mm -hmm. with each other, we've laughed, we've cried right. with each other, and we know each other's lives and the mm -hmm. things that we have going on, and we are real with each other. Mm -hmm. And there's just such beauty in that, you know? Yes. And, and there's such beauty in being real in our relationship with the Lord. He knows everything anyway, That's you know? Right. There's no high hiding from the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, he doesn't want us to hide from him and he doesn't want us to hide from each other. Yeah. Mm. And if we would just stop hiding it within the walls of the church and outside and got real with each other, it would just, it would be, you know, we'd have such a better witness to the people around us. Mm -hmm. they, they could stop pointing the finger and say, stop saying you're being such a hypocrite, right. like you said. You know, it, it's, you, you, you talked about, um, so much there, but one, one of the things that I think that we as women can struggle with for sure is comparison. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. 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 You know, yes. even oh. to the Proverbs 31 woman. Yes. Even to what should, how should I be as a mother, as yes. you so eloquently, you know, share with us so transparently. Um, mm. And there's something about that comparison, which the Bible clearly tells us not to do and gives us the reasons for not doing it. And it's so unhealthy. And, you know, I think sometimes we hide from ourselves, yeah. you know, mm. because the you that you are is the God, you know, is what God created you to yeah. be. Mm. Now you're always evolving, of course, right, right. but if I'm comparing, I will never be who it is that God has Amen. made me to be. Yes, this good. is one of the reasons why it grieves me when I see, well, whether it's men or women, um, take on someone else's shadow. You often yeah. hear me say mm. that regurgitated revelation is nothing but manipulation. Well, so mm, if you don't take the well, time, don't mm. study me, don't study Angela and try to, what was Angela's answer? Yes. Or what was, you know, how, what was a, a pastor's yeah. message? And then I try to put my spin on it. No, get on your face yes. before Amen. God Amen. and let him call out your gifting. Yes. Because Amen. even as sisters, I'm missing that. Mm -hmm. If yes. Corey doesn't bring what she brings, every time Roxy opens her mouth, she gives me a challenge, a yes. different perspective. I don't mm -hmm. even think that way. And you know what? I don't have to because mm -hmm. there's yes. a safety net here with the cross pollination of giftings. So if I don't compare, then mm. I can relax and I can kind of mm. wonder what Roxy has to say about that. Yeah. Yes. You know, I'll never forget yes. when she, bought, we were talking about something about women's rights and you bought yeah. a perspective yeah. that never even crossed my, my mm. mind and it has changed my perspective. Yes. 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 Angela, the biggest struggle Christian women face. You know, I agree with these ladies. I think it's the eternal perspective mm -hmm. and resting in the truth and reality that I am a daughter of Amen. the Most High, Amen. and that trumps everything. Mm -hmm. So when I walk mm -hmm. in a room and there's somebody mm -hmm. and she's looking the best, or she's the smartest, or mm -hmm. she's th yeah. there, that don't comparison. Let, don't, don't let me make that, you feel bad. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you say, child, what you say? What? <laughs> we're trans, we're really trans. <laughs> And can fall off when I'm yes. walking in the reality that my existence and my perspective is eternally focused. Amen. That the one thing is the only thing, and it's Him. Yes. You know, Amen. so I think all of that translates and goes inward to Amen. every every issue we have, every struggle we have can be sourced back to the same. Yes. It's not the one thing, and I'm not living in the eternal reality. Yeah. Woo! That's so good. good. That was wow. good. Is busyness a big struggle for any other woman <laughs> than me? <laughs> what a big, big struggle. Okay, oh. one of my favorite words ever. Flo, I'm coming to you with mm -hmm. one of my favorite words. I'm going <laughs> to hand it. This is your question. I'm going <laughs> to hand it to you <laughs> delicately. <laughs> Should a happy life be expected as a believer? And I am so tempted to say, Amy, what's your answer? Because this is usually her thing. You know? but, Check her uh, notes. Check her that's notes. the final answer what Amy has to say about being happy. But no. No, you know, um, I kind of think, and, and you know, you guys hone in on this. I think sometimes expectation can be external mm -hmm. and not internal. Yeah. So I think choice comes from an internal place, wow. yeah. you know. And if, it's, if choice is internal, then it can connect you to the eternal, yes. as you have just said, you know. And so I think that that's sometimes where the challenge is because we ha our expectations lots of times are based on outside sources, what we see on television, what yeah, people say, yeah, what we yeah, see yeah, in the media. Yeah. And so it's like, I don't have that, so how can I be happy? Yeah. You know, my husband doesn't make six figures, so, you know, my, mm -hmm. my children haven't gone to college. My, mm -hmm. I, I don't live where, you know, somebody else lives. I don't drive what somebody else yeah. drives. And so oh. I feel slighted. God oh. doesn't love me as much yeah. because oh, in this good. society, yeah. we think, even with ministry, right? Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Um, you often hear me say, I don't like the green room when I'm dealing with you. And the yes. reason I don't is because it gets to be like a comparison zone. You know, uh, how many are you running? 500, 300, you know, and, and, and uh, I've been here. I've been there. I've been there. I, you, so what? Yes. Have you been in the face of Jesus? Oh, right. You know what I mean? Yes. So anyway, that's it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> that didn't look very happy, that little <laughs> face. I'm just kidding. So good. Have you been in the face of Jesus? <laughs> <laughs> Corey, a happy. I've, I've <laughs> said this before, and I think we've disagreed, but I think happiness is a word that depends on circumstances. And joy does not depend on circ. I'm just going to ignore this. <laughs> yeah, <for> the <laughs> go ahead, Corey, go ahead. So, anyways, Roxy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> These happy people over here. <laughs> depend on their 
circumstances. <laughs> and joy does not depend joy. on your circumstances. Yes. And so yes. I just feel like, you know, we have the word John 16, 33. I've mm -hmm. told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. So we are told in the scriptures we're going to have trouble in this world, yeah. you know? Yes. Like yes. we're not promised you know, a lifetime filled without pain or without, you know, with ever overflowing happiness, you know, mm -hmm. there's going to be times yeah. that there's going to be pain and not everybody's life is going to look the same. We got a big world outside of this little one we That's live right, right here, That's you right. know, and there's a, a lot more than just this country we live in too, you know, there's circumstances that we, some people in this country will never see. I know that you know, some of you are very well traveled and have mm -hmm. seen a lot more than others, but there's people that never see that, you know, mm -hmm. and, right. and don't have that perspective. But, but we've talked about this before. People that live in developing countries, you see a lot more joy sometimes. Yeah, yes. that's true. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and it's about the perspective of being grateful for what you do have, <laughs> you know, really? and that, yes. yes. So, so, you know, yes. it's that, I think it's that joy versus that happiness right. perspective. Amen. And I just want to say that in my world on Sister to Sister, I'm happy that the camera didn't catch my, me fixing my wig. <laughs> Cause it was sliding back, <laughs> but I'm a, good now. You know my cap slid up. We're really trying to avoid okay. it, but flow is so real. She makes us happy. Uh, you know, I look at Amy and she joy. You talk about yes. joy. That is her yeah. first name. Uh, she is well, joy. It's actually Amy. But. Well, yeah. yeah. Uh, she's getting uh, christened or whatever a new name, but. Yeah. Yes, and she has joy. We've seen her in struggles and all of us, and yeah. she, she maintains that joy. Yeah. And the other word I'm thinking of is in First T Timothy, contentment. Mm. That's it. Yeah, godliness that's it. Yeah. godliness with contentment is great gain. Yes. And he mm, says, good. Timothy, don't seek after all these things, the world. Yeah. All these things are going to pile on you and the riches of this life, but godliness, what is that? our conduct, our speech, he says, our love, our faith, our purity, with contentment. It doesn't mean God doesn't give you a plan for the future, yeah. but right where you are now, you grow. Uh, what's the scripture that says, uh, cultivate the land, remain in the land, and cultivate faithfulness. That's good, that's good. So where you are right now, be content, and it will bring you joy. Amen. That's it. Amen. So good. Um, Angela, what does turning the other cheek look like practically? It means not holding on to bitterness. Ooh. Ah. Yeah. It means, <laughs> it means yeah. saying, okay, you might have slapped this cheek. I'm going to offer this one because that's not going to take me down. You know, we were just talking about contentment. Paul yes. says, whether I abound or I'm abased, you know, whether yes. I'm really enjoying life and people are hailing me as a God mm. or they left me for dead outside the city walls. Mm, None you. of these things move me. Mm -hmm. So when I practically wow. turn my other cheek, it's saying, you can't move me. You can punch me in the face. You can crucify me in this flesh, but you won't move me wow. from the surety that I am God's and that's more than enough. Mm. Wow. Now, I wouldn't advise that you did that to me. <laughs> However, <laughs> culturally, biblically, she is absolutely uh, correct. <laughs> I mean, I'm more with John and them, but we'll get to that in a minute. Don't worry. Uh, no, we're not going to punch wait, you in the I face. Had to put, 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 take my camera off because I was fixing my wig, but let me put that back, okay, because I, I pulled up a scripture. Okay, so um, culturally, when somebody got smacked, it was, you know, somebody from the hierarchy, you know, slapping yeah, yeah, someone, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. blah, 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 blah. And so you turning your face to get slapped on the right. other cheek was like, this is how we resolve, you know, yeah. my humility. This is how we it. resolve. Yes. It's me um, taking con control of that. And so the, the message is, is really about us um, learning not to allow somebody to have that kind of so, control. You're not going to humiliate me. I'm going to humble my myself and take control of the situation. Wow. However, John, who is Flo's brother, um, <laughs> did not, when he was dealing with the Sanhedrin court, 
Acts yeah. 4, he absolutely did not. Let me read Exodus to you. Um, Exodus 22. Do I have the right one? I don't know what I got written down. Anyway, it happened in Exodus 2 with Moses. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, go ahead. You know, and, um, it, you know, I, I just think that one of the... Um, one of the things that we need to be always, you guys always hear me say balance. And it's, yes. I say I'm in good company because Jesus did not only not turn the cheek, other cheek, in this situation, he turned tables. So wow. I would tread on that very lightly. Yeah, and I do think mm -hmm. there is a balance in this. Never, mm -hmm. never take a physical abuse from anybody. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. You are God's creation. Yes. Yes. Amen. He didn't create you to get bounced around That's and right. punched. Right. That's right. So how I take this is, is not turning the cheek to get slapped, but the scripture says, vengeance is mine, yes. saith the Lord. What do people want to do? You want to punch back. Yes. Now, sometimes there's a time to overturn the table, but God says, vengeance, revenge, leave room for God's judgment. Yeah. You know, when that's happened to me, people have said things, done things. I've stood my ground for what I believed, right. but God had the last word mm. and turned the table. God turned the table. He his vengeance came through. His judgment, mm. my judgment's not good. Mine is human. His is yes. eternal. And I think in between Ooh. God's judgment and the person smacking you, you can put a comma there, which is smacking them back. But I don't know if that's real. <laughs> <laughs> one, one thing I know for sure. Number one, I wouldn't mess with Flo if I were you. Uh, number two, we don't want you to struggle. We want you to have a happy life. <laughs> And we want you to be able to turn the other cheek. And we'll be right back. You take a little break, but we do not take a break. <laughs> Talking the whole time. And we are ready for this next question. We're laughing, we're crying, we're <laughs> agonizing here over our thoughts, opinions, and scriptures. Uh, Corey, I'm going to come to you on this one. This is, this is a, a doozy. What is the difference between God tempting us and God testing us? Okay, well, first of all, God does not tempt us right. Come on. Uh, because the, the scriptures tell us that. Yeah, and right. so I'm that's going right. to answer this question directly from the scriptures because right. the scriptures are oh, the best the way answer. to answer that's this right. question. Right. Um, this is from uh, James 1, 13. Yeah. The Bible says, when tempted, no one should say God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor right. does he tempt anyone. Um, it is true that God tests us. Um, he allows us to get into situations where we have to make a choice mm -hmm. between, you know, right or wrong or between one thing or another. But that, I mean, literally you cannot be more clear than that scripture right there, that yeah, God right. does not tempt us. So um, mm -hmm. I think that's the difference there between, you know, being tested and being mm -hmm. tempted. It's, you know, I, I, people could say it's semantics or whatever, but it's, you could not be more clear than that scripture right there that it, God does not tempt us. Mm -hmm. And above that, he says, he does test you. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's so right. he takes you through trials, it says to test your faith mm -hmm. because that produces endurance. Mm -hmm. That's right. So there might be hardships come along. There might be challenges to whether it's, we are talking about our personalities, things we're going through, being hurt, being happy. And the other thing I want to say about temptation, you know, Proverbs warns the young man, and I'm going to warn a young woman too. Mm -hmm. It talks about the young man thinking it's dark, nobody sees me, I'm going to walk down the street of that seduct seductive woman. Mm -hmm. Don't go to the corner, the Bible says. Mm -hmm. Don't go down the street. Don't put temptation <clears throat> in front of you and say, oh, well, you know, God made this beautiful thing. I'm going to do it anyway or whatever it is. Don't try to convince yourself that it's right when the scripture says it's wrong. Don't tempt yourself yeah. 
You're yeah. tempting your own flesh yeah. Yeah. with evil. Mm -hmm. yeah. So good, because when you're tempted, you're being drawn by your own lust. Yes. When you're tested, God has already given you what you need to pass the test, That's yes. good. you know? And so That's like in Job, good. it says, he knows the way I take. When he tests me, I shall come forth Yes. as pure gold. Yes. And we always quote that quite a bit, don't we? But we just use the pure gold yes. part. Mm. That's it. But th it was the testing, yeah. as you said, it, it, you know, yeah. it, it, it yes. refines us, it, it causes us to grow. And then in Exodus 20 and 20, it talks about, uh, here's Moses, you know, and, it, and here he is, he's talking to them about how God is testing them so they would not mm. sin. Yes. And that is the thing, you know, when you get tested by God, at least for me, it has usually been, I have gone through something that he has fully equipped me to handle that test. Yeah. Then it comes to a choice, will I obey? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. good. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And when Jesus was tempted, it was from the devil. Yeah. Satan was tempting That's him, right. you know. Mm -hmm. Angela, any thoughts on tempting and testing? No, I think exactly mm -hmm. what Flo was saying. I love that. Mm -hmm. Tempting is the proofing of our, or testing is the proofing of our faith, Amen. where tempting Amen. is well the stripping said. of it. Yep. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let me write that down. You two are the wisdom of Flo. I'll, give, I'll give you credit first time. <laughs> <laughs> it's all mad. <laughs> tempting is the stripping. <laughs> Forget that she said it, because next time it'll be me. But go ahead. All right, all right. <laughs> She'll put a revelation on it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, this is an important question. What makes Christianity and not Buddhism or Mormonism or others the right religion? Flo. Ooh, so isn't it interesting that just last night I was on a conference call and I was on the call with a, um, a Buddhist and a Muslim. And so we were having a pretty good conversation. Mm -hmm. And so I don't mean it to offend anyone. Mm -hmm. This is why I believe um, apologetics is so important. Yes. But even more than apologetics is your relationship with the Lord so that you can be grounded. I don't need to argue with you. I don't need to fight with you. I don't need to yes. be bitter. You know, there was a time that we used to have a show here on Cornerstone. It, it was called Exposing the Lie. Mm -hmm. And I love that wow. show. Um, because he would take different faiths and he would expose, you know, what was behind it mm -hmm. um, and, 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 and compare it, you know, with, with Christianity. And here's the thing, we have the blood bought mm -hmm. religion, that's number one. And I don't wanna say religion because we have relationship. Now with Buddhism, what the, uh, the, the dear lady shared with me was about the chanting and I forget the name of the book that they use, but you know, you're in the temple and everybody is chanting the same chant. She says, it's the sound and you know, it's being released in the universe. And I'm thinking in my head, I didn't say it to her because I didn't want to be offensive. He that when his souls is wise, but it was like, honey, you're making sound in the universe and I'm worshiping the God that creates that universe. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. and you know, mm -hmm. then, you know, with my Muslim uh, sister, you know, she is really in, in the midst of really seeking God, mm -hmm. but she's seen some things mm -hmm. that have just bought some confusion there. Mm -hmm. But what I believe is when we have the truth, I don't have to be afraid of a lie. Mm -hmm. yeah. At the same time, I need to be sensitive to those that have succumbed to that. Mm -hmm. Because by the grace of God, yeah. there goes I. Yes. yes. Woo. Yeah. Angela? Yeah, I think that I like this question because mm -hmm. it's like, how do we know it's right? To me, when I hear right, that's mm -hmm. very much a human idea. Mm, that's good. And so that's it's good. not about Christianity being right or wrong. It's mm -hmm. true. Period. It's Amen. the capital T Amen. truth. You know, when I studied theology, one of my specializations was mm -hmm. Tibetan Buddhism. There are like hundreds, thousands mm -hmm. of different Buddhism okay. um, practices. Mm -hmm. And within Tibetan Buddhism and the other religions that I found and that I studied, what was so powerful was like their pinnacle, the reaching of the mind mm -hmm. or the mm -hmm. emptying of self, That's right. mm -hmm. was completely and utterly filled in its highest form through Christ Jesus. And so when you look at these debates that we have or these questions, it's not about Christianity being right. It's about that he is the fulfillment of all things. Mm, that's good. Amen. That's good. And I'll tell you one thing, Buddha's dead, Muhammad's gone, but 
Jesus is alive. alive. And Amen. that is the absolute truth. We'll be right back after this break and we're going to wrap this thing up. Amen. Today's scripture is from John 15, 11. These things I have spoken to you that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. What are these things that Jesus has spoken? You have to have some context from that chapter. This is when Jesus is speaking to his disciples in the upper room for the Last Supper, right before his crucifixion. Mm -hmm. this is, these are the most important words that he wants his disciples to remember before he leaves his earthly ministry with his disciples. 10 times he says, abide in me. This is abiding is staying with me, living in me. And when you abide in Christ, your joy will be full. He is saying to his disciples, live in me and your joy will be fulfilled. And that same truth is true for you. Oh my, that is my one prayer for you today that your joy will be full. We always like to end sister to sister with a scripture. And today that is as iron sharpens iron. So one sister or five of us sharpen another. <laughs> It's brisky, it's risky, but it's the sisters. See you next week. <laughs>